friends, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, welcome, my name is Trina, and in today's video, I'm going to be flipping through my fourth anime review journal. Because of all of the challenges that I have done throughout the first part of this year, I have finally filled out the fourth of this um, number of journals that I have been accumulating over the years, filling out all of the anime that I have watched throughout basically my whole lifetime. So if you haven't seen the first three yet, I will put a link to the playlist up in the iCards for you to uh, go and see the flip through of. Um, basically, this is my way of showing like recommendations and all of the stuff that either worth your time or not worth your time watching. So this is the fourth one. Usually I do like my covers. The first one I did like a crafting sort of situation of Kuros, the captain of Nekoma from Haikyuu, the jersey. The second one is the grimoire of Charmy of the Black Bulls from Black Clover. And then the third one was Kunikida's Ideals Notebook. However, for the fourth one, this is the last one of this type of notebook because I don't have um, this type anymore. Um, this notebook was given to us uh, from my dad's like business, like a giveaway sort of situation during the new year. And I grabbed only like six of them and four of them have been dedicated to become my anime review journal. So the next line of journals will be different um, going forward because this, as I said, the last one. So uh, I got kind of lazy in making the cover. I was planning on making like probably like Genshin Impact inspired um, catalyst like the Thrilling Tales or something, but I got kind of lazy doing that and decided to just put a construction paper on and just slap a few stickers in here and call it done. So as I said, this is the fourth one. Uh, in front here, I actually have like a drawing or like a little doodle sketch of Trickstar. My brother and I play Card Guide Vanguard and there is an anime for that. We are at season five, I think, right now. Um, if you want to watch that, um, I also recommend it, maybe because I'm biased. But if you're not into like the TCG scene, then maybe it's not for you. Um, but I do have like a Trickstar doodle here because we used to play... Um, Kondo Yuyu's, the protagonist of Cardfight Vanguard, like the latest ones, um, protagonist deck, Mahar Nirvana or Nirvana Jiva, and his like first uh, card that he got during like his newbie era was Trick Stars. I have it there, and I also have my annotations here. I do put circle stickers at the top corner of each page on like whether it is yellow for animated movie. Green is like my 100% recommendation. It may not be a 10 out of 10 normally, or like usually it may not be, but I still recommend it nonetheless. Purple one or the lavender one is for OVA. This is for me to like tell whether or not it is an OVA or movie based on the my anime list um, categorization, just from my easy counting at the end of the notebook. And then for the dark blue ones, it is like the ones that I find that is not worth your time doing. So here we have my cover. I do put like anime review, the number of the notebook, as well as like the entry number, so it is 454 to 607. However, this is not entirely accurate because in my first and second anime review journal, I did put in like manga entries. However, as the years go by, I transferred my manga entries to a separate manga journal because I don't want to leave like those journals open, even though I have filled out all of the notebooks just so I can store it um, and not think about it anymore. So I leave a separate manga journal open and then all of the anime that I have finished watching, I just put in here. And also, uh, I do tend to not put like anime that I have not finished yet. Like for example, it is still airing and ongoing. Example, One Piece, Detective Conan. I don't put it in here because of that same fear because we know that manga sometimes um, takes years to finish, years to complete. So I don't want to keep all of like these notebooks open just for like one or two entries. So what I decided was that once I finished an anime, that is when I write my entries in here. So let's get on with it. I started this uh, journal August 3, 2022. That was my first entry based on the watch here. And so this is like a good one year into all of the anime that I have watched because I have finished this notebook at September 12. So um, I can't really remember some of this, so we'll just look into it. My format for each of my notebooks are always the same. I put a title, write the title um, in a different color just so I can see it instantly. The creator, which is usually the manga um, author or something, um, but there are also cases wherein the creator is not stated or it is a studio of some sort, so I don't put it there. But mostly, if it's creator, it's usually um, manga author, studio, or unless otherwise indicated. The director is usually, I put the 
uh, there's usually just one director, but if there is multiple, I would like if it fits, I will put all of the last names. But if it's not like a whole team of directors, sometimes there's like four or five of them that I just put the primary like or like the head director, and then of course studio, the release date, the, when I watch it, the genre, however much I could fit in this small space, number of episodes, and then my ratings. Then we put here the synopsis. I take my synopsis from the my anime list app or website, and then if it's too long, sometimes I just shorten it. And then I will add my review at the end. Normally, I don't really write down my review instantly. So sometimes if you are like pausing through each page and reading through my review, sometimes I tend to forget like little instances of the anime. That's why I have a anime companion journal wherein once I am like watching through an episode, I write down what I thought about it so that I could compile all that and write a some sort of like a more... Um, accurate review, more useful for me and for others that I'm sharing this with. So here we have like, that is what I said, when it's like animated movie, I indicate it up at the top. I won't really talk through all of these. However, um, if I see something that um, I remember that I want to talk about, then I will stop. For example, I really had high hopes with Housing Complex. See, I forgot if it this was like Netflix or where was this aired, but it is a four episode long horror, some sort of horror, wherein the housing complex is built atop of like a ritual space, a sacrifice ritual um, altar of some sort. And it is built on top of that. And then a lot of like um, spooky situation happened inside of the housing complex wherein a lot of people died, a lot of people like got possessed and something. and. To be fair, um, it was like a good concept. It is like those documentary concepts of like horror inside of a building. I really wanted it to work. However, I only rated it a 5 out of 10 because I am somewhat disappointed. One, it felt rushed. Two, they capped it off to like, of course, the ritual grounds and then like the a deity passing time, basically. So if you are like just wanting to experience it, it's fine. It's, it is scary, but it is like... Um, not as I wanted it to be. So yeah, next we proceed. There's a lot of it here that um, are just like 7 out of 10. I really need to like maybe possibly um, note down how many like 10 out of 10s are there in this notebook. And here we have actually um, one of my favorite of this uh, notebook I have included, which is Mob Psycho 100. Mob Psycho 100 is a three-season anime wherein the main character is a psychic and he fights like supernatural beings and such, but also uh, is like a coming-of-age sort of anime. It's very wholesome and probably one of the most satisfying endings to an anime that I ever watched. Plus it's Bones. Um, I really like like the Studio Bones creations as a fan of Bungo Stray Dogs and such. And this is here where we start 2023 with um, the last... I know I didn't put like highly recommended here, but I placed it in the very first season so that I would like indicate wherein all of the three seasons are just as good. So yeah, this is the first entry for 2023 with Mob Psycho 100, the last season. And I did have like a bunch of like um, different genres throughout the month. This is like my indication for an OVA. This is an OVA for like the title. However, my anime list counted it as a movie. So there is like this um, category wherein it is either a series, a um, movie, or like a special. So when it's special, it's mostly OVA. And I count these towards like the um, series part when I count how many episodes I have completed in this whole journal or like the end of the year tally of some sort. So that's why I make it a point to distinguish whether or not it's an OVA or a movie for that sake. Record of Nagarok Season 2 actually ended with just 10 episodes. It took them so long actually to just split it into Season 2 and Season 2 Part 2, wherein it's usually 15 episodes, but they stopped at 10 and we waited for so long just to get the last 5 episodes. I did make it a point to like watch more of the animated movies. I had like a bunch of backlog with like animated movies, but sometimes it's hit or miss when it comes to animated movies. And also if you've noticed, like it's not exactly the same green, like it's like a lighter green, it's still green. I have like a pack of um, the circle dot stickers with different gradients or different shades of green and yellows and blue. 
So I just use whatever is available because the store that I bought these from actually are like they don't carry the circle stickers anymore and I still have a bunch so I'm like use what you have. I also recommend this actually. Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting is like one of my favorite childcare anime. Yeka, the main like uh, child in this anime, sets the standard for me for all almost all of like the children in childcare slice of life anime for my case. Um, she's kind of like more mature than her age, I believe, like a very young lady sort of situation. Also, I recommend Land of the Lustrous. I really want what is next of this because it hints into something sort of like a intrigue when it comes to the main, um, like the monk, like the, their father or something of all of these anthropomorphic, they are basically gemstones. Um, they are like humanoid gemstones. And they have this like sort of father that is like a monk and it's like a lot of religious um, imagery, religious figures that are like the main antagonist. And so it's very uh, intriguing of a story uh, and I like it very much. I think Dokyusei is my first 10 out of 10 for this year. Sometimes I do say that movies are like hit or miss, but when it comes to rating movies, it's very easy to make it a 10 out of 10 if it's like um, concise and conclusive and it's very satisfying and beautiful. So yeah, uh, this is my first 10 out of 10. There's still more going forward, but um, I just want to point that out because um, it's so easy, I feel like, to give like movies 10 out of 10 because it's no longer that draggy for like a one hour and a half movie that you are like feeling satisfied with. And also trying to, um, what do you call this? I am trying to go through all of the Pokemon movies, even though it's like kind of slow. I only watch like one or two Pokemon movies a month um, just to get it um, out of the way. But I also like find that it is a goal for me as someone who really loves Pokemon to actually watch the anime. And I only finish like up to the second region. And as someone who is like started loving Pokemon, on the third region, like for um, Hoenn, I am a Gen 3 baby and I haven't gotten around to watching the anime of my favorite region. So I'm going to possibly do that in the future. I also kind of, um, I don't know why I didn't indicate this. These two I didn't indicate, but Ghost Hound, um, as I am recalling it right now, is actually one of those that I would recommend if you're into psychological horror because this is like a it's not necessarily a murder mystery, but it's more of like a mystery when it comes to something that happened in the past. And it's also like super natural sci-fi. Um, so if you can tolerate like um, horror, psychological horror, um, this is a good one to pick up as well. I think the only reason why I didn't indicate it here, because during the time I was um, doing this, it's sort of like uh, kind of draggy. There is a part, like maybe one or two episodes that is like taking this far too long. But the ending was okay enough, and it's also small town horror, which is like my favorite of all of the genres. And as for these two, I did not indicate this, but still, um, I won't really say that um, this is a waste of time watching. However, Blast of Tempest annoys me to some extent because this is like a romance drama. It, it's look at it; it's actions, uh, psychological drama, and fantasy. However, I think the underlying problem was this. With this is somewhat of like the romance, the romance subplot, so it annoyed me. And for Fena Pirate Princess, it's weird. <laughs> for me, it's weird. It's like all of the different like fantasy elements you are trying to like piece together, and yet it wasn't supposed to work, but you forced it to. Um, still, the um, art style is pretty. It's very beautiful, but still, it's not something that you are like have to. You could live without watching it, basically. Um, Made in Abyss. Made in Abyss Season 2. I could have given this a 10 out of 10, but in my um, fault, I actually watched this before I watched the movie. So I didn't get some of the references. So if you're going to watch this, watch the... I forgot the title of the movie, but I did watch it here um, at the later part. Um, but it's still so good. As we always say in Made in Abyss, if you like Promise Neverland, you also would like this. It is the same, almost like gore. Uh, survival horror sort of situation but it adds to like the adventure of the unknown and um, this is more of like monsters side the first one was like going down and finding out the dangers this one is more of like a community of monsters 
So that's um, another highly recommended one, the whole Maiden Abyss series. I also got around to watching season 2 of some of the anime that I haven't watched um, the continuation of or I haven't continued with. That time I got reincarnated as a slime season 2 um, at a doctor's office and I found that it was kind of a bit boring. I, I don't know with the next part if it's better or not, but for me that part was kind of a bit boring. Um, it only picked up at the end. Um, so I'm like, if I could just skip all of those previous ones and go to the ending, the ending would have been great. Also, I did watch Kizumo no Gatari. I did like a challenge in this month to a deck of cards decide what anime I watch. And I have a whole playlist of all of my monthly anime challenges wherein um, I do all of these like sort of games in order to pick out what title I will watch for the whole month, like a, a list of anime that I will watch for the whole month. And Kizum Nagatari was one of them. However, um, I don't know, but this is not something that I would watch. So I don't know. I have like decided that I won't be watching the Monogatari series because of it. And yeah, um, but it did. But this is like the whole, everything is like movies. Maybe that's why um, this part is like um, having a bump because most of what I've watched are like series. And this is one that I also recommend. If you have watched anything from UFO Table, Fate series, Fate Stay Night, Fate Grand Order, um, you would also like watching The Garden of Sinners, which is uh, Shiki's um, story. And it's like an eight part or eight chapter movie. And of all of the movies, I think I really love uh, this one, um, Chapter 5 and Chapter 7. Chapter 7 is part 2 of the very first one, I think, or the second one, the second one. So the story is um, different compared to like the whole Fate Stay Night, Fate series, um, or like the Fate Apocrypha, because these are not like masters and servants, it's just basically the story of Shiki, and Fujino and some of was it Fujino, and some of the yeah it's Fujino. They're they're basically their stories. The story of some of the popular servants that are in the Fate series. So I recommend those. Ghost Hunt. I also watch these. Um, these are romances, and I am not like that romance shoujo type of girl. I get stressed out when it comes to like romances that have a lot of like high school drama situation. Um, I really like uh, Your Light in April. Um, I didn't cry as much as Orange. I think Orange and Anohana are like those types of like cry-cry anime that hurts. This still hurts, but it's not to the point wherein I cried a lot. So I'm like, it's fine. I do really got stressed out with Al Alha Ride, though. Black Summer, Tatami Galaxy. I also recommend Tatami Galaxy if you're into it. Um, very avant-garde time travel, but it's also like something that makes you realize that whatever is in front of you, you have to grab it sort of situation. And this is basically a time loop sort of anime. So it's very beautiful. The art style is very different. It's almost like avant-garde, as I said. But if you're into that, I highly recommend the story. It's only 11 episodes, but it takes you into like a bunch of realization about um, adulthood, about relationships, about uh, society in general. Uh, yes, April. April is um, my month wherein I picked out all of the worst rated anime, and I, I basically have a vlog of this, of watching all of the, I, I think it was six, rating of six and below anime, and see if it is deserving of its, um, deserving of its rating, or is it possible that I would like one or two from the list and give it a higher rating that it um, is stated in the my anime list and the very first one that i chose was school days and this was actually like something that my friend told me to not watch at first and then when she knew that i am doing this sort of challenge oh dear but like it's it's trash it's basically trash but um you could see that in that story it is like it was intentional, basically. But why am I watching this kid being very, like, uh, what do you call this? Like, 
was were they in high school or were they in middle school? And then they were like everything was like um, this guy trying to get it on with almost every woman, every girl in his class, and also outside I think. And then there's like a love triangle of some sort. <laughs> Why am I watching this? This is so stressful. So yeah, um, it's not something that you should watch because it will only anger you. But it it works with the whole vlog concept of watching all of the worst anime ever. I also placed this um, Tabu Tattoo. Uh, I also don't. I also feel like you shouldn't watch this because it is that like uh, sort of anime story wherein. They name their character Seigi, which is translated to justice, and they have this huge sense of justice, fight against evil until they turn into evil themselves because they don't align or like their ideals don't align with that of like who they work for anymore, and it annoys me to no end. And it's, it's pointless. I do also want to quickly mention Assassin's Pride. Which is very problematic because it very much screams grooming. It is about a tutor who is an assassin who, if this kid of nobility doesn't show that she has potential for magic, the tutor must um, off her. And so um, the tutor found that she has potential but hasn't awakened yet. So she, so he shared his mana with her, and then like this kid has suddenly have like feelings for. His, um, feelings for her tutor and like this is so problematic I don't want to watch this anymore um, but I did manage to like like something which is I've gotten stronger I've somehow gotten stronger when I improve my farming related skills but this is like a bias on my point because I really love Harvest Moon I really love farming sims and on that episode I think it was the first episode where um, the main character has maxed his like farming skill and there was like this S tier dragon that was about to attack the kingdom, or was it just the countryside? I, I forgot. But what he did was that he threw a carrot at the dragon that he just harvested, basically, and the dragon exploded. So that that got me, and I really I really actually liked it. It was like low cost, low energy, low brain cell sort of isekai anime. Um, also don't like this. I don't like this. Um, I do rate it like six, somewhat a six because I like the concept. I just don't like how um, they ended up telling the story. Like it's it's so frustrating because when you read it in the synopsis, it really um, gets you. However, once you see it, it's either like they did not go or follow through the story in the best way that it can. Um, they did not. Um, they did not show the potential of that anime or that story concept. They put in some sort of a character that they think would cause drama and thus lengthen the story, but it doesn't work. And sometimes it's just bad animation. Um, which, to be fair, you could like, um, what do you call this? Um, it is possible to happen, especially with all of the budget and it comes to like um, studios. We understand that, but sometimes it's just doesn't work and one that doesn't work is example is this one which is Gibby 8 which is like this is 2020 it's almost similar to like telling a story of COVID for me because this is like infection viral disease and um, they are summoning like samurais to fight these diseases and then the cause of the disease was like I, I ranted about this in my um, that vlog that I mentioned earlier, so you could watch how frustrated I was while or like after I watched this. But it's, it's you could all you could you could actually read like what I say here, and it's basically um, um, and as I said, like a great plot done wrong. But I do like Lucifer the Biscuit Hammer. I could have rated this like an eight out of ten um, because I really like the space supernatural concept. There's about psychics and such. I really like the ending. However, it dragged on for so long on the first few parts. Like, it's some sort of like a training arc, but it's still good. That's all I can say. That's all I can say about Garza's Wing. That's all. Um, X Arms. I don't really like the animation style. And I also don't like that the only reason or like the way that he could possess this android. 
um, because he is like um, a soul or like his um, what do you call that? His existence, his um, consciousness. His consciousness is trapped inside of a cube, brain, robot, some sort, and he could access like an android or he could possess an android of this police that he was helping. And the only way that he could access or like is granted permission to. Uh, possess that android is through the owner and android kissing so like no 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 this one um uh what do you call this uh this one as like contrast to uh Ghibli, this is also like a sci-fi drama that is like a viral infection however i really like this it's four episodes it's quite short this could count as a movie um the length of it um but this is a romance drama wherein this girl has the power to like um, stop the infection of nano machines. Uh, I'll, I'll just talk about it in the easiest way that I could remember. Um, it's like nano machines infecting people, make, turning them into like hard shell robots or like um, monsters. And so this girl has the power and then she met a guy that was like a soldier in the front lines. Um, they are basically the people who are being thrown by this army or this government to fight and like they, um, they were like dispensable and so this girl really liked this guy and her powers get manifested um, to protect this guy in the front lines and when she learns that um, the scientists that were like um, experimenting on her and also is part of this um, whole organization or like government institution that sends out these soldiers do not care for like the team of the guy that she likes he was like if you don't care for like the people in the front line then why do i care uh to protect you um that is like her thought process so like yeah if if you don't protect the people that are like the ones that fighting for you then why should i protect you sort of situation so yeah it's like you go girl <laughs> and um and yeah, so it's like a tragic drama, basically. Cerberus, what is this again? Oh yeah, this is like um, the most annoying main character I have ever encountered for this whole year. He is like a descendant of magicians. Um, this is a fantasy anime. So he is a descendant of magicians who were killed by this dragon. Uh, his parents sealed. And so he wanted to like um, take revenge on this dragon. And he insisted on being a swordsman, even though he has no um, talent for being a swordsman. And so <laughs> um, the teacher or like the sage or something that taught him how to fight um, tricked him into using like an invisible sword, but it turns out to be magic. He is like manifesting his magic uh, in a form of a long sword. This is so annoying, and I really don't, I, I really think you shouldn't just, it's a waste of time. Some of these are short, like, three minute episodes, they are fine. And also this one, Vampire Homes. Um, to think that it's like a mystery, Supernatural, where Sherlock Holmes is a vampire. However, it turns out that this whole um, series is just an ad for their game. So there's a game for this. And I also like mentioned this like previously in some of my anime review journals where in if it's like an anime adaptation of a game, it's some sort of uh, lackluster. I also like watch Suikoden here, like for this low rated anime, like Suikoden, and I also gave it a 5 out of 10, which proves my point of some sort. Um, Fairy Gone is also disappointing because um, the main like plot was to look for this main character was looking for uh, her childhood like friend or family and then because they were separated by war and then the main plot was like to take care to guard this book of fairies wherein if it goes into the wrong hands um disaster will happen and then the book got lost and they didn't even continue to find the book and the plot kind of changed so like it's it's very messy i, I didn't really understand it anymore and then here, this is also like one of those um, anime that was rated very low, but I rated it very high. I gave it an 8 out of 10. This is a very horrific, like messy sort of anime. Um, this is Osama Games, wherein it's like a popular group party game wherein you draw sticks and then uh, with numbers and one of them is like a king 
there, there's a mark of a king and so whoever draws the stick with the king mark uh, has the absolute power to like order two people or one person around with the number and this is basically the same thing only the stakes are like you have to do this with someone else that is very uh, immoral you have to kill this person you have to like um, steal something show personal information dig into private stuff and this is very um psychological horror but also very gory and the ending <laughs> i didn't expect the ending but i also kind of like uh duh that's what's going to happen so i actually recommend this if you like look past how trashy it is <laughs> it's still it, it's still okay for me at least yep okay so that was like the last of like the trashy anime that i've watched and we move on to like the wholesome ones the ones that i think is probably good and I forgot what challenge I did for this one. It's like some of these are like for for closure sake. I think this is a double entry. I have watched Air Gear before, but I have forgotten what it was like, what the story is. Um, that's why I only rewatch this for closure, and that's all that there is for the review. I think this is a double entry. Okay, I I might I might get some like um, negative feedback on this but melancholy of haruhi shizumiya even though this is like very popular during like my elementary and high school years i really don't like it it's like fan service gone wrong and then i'm very much annoyed with the progression of the episodes i'm not sure if the second part of this will be better but i don't care to watch it anymore i i think it, does, it didn't really age well and i'm very much annoyed with haruhi I do have a lot of like nine out of nines here. I recommend them, especially Campfire Cooking and Underworld. You can find it on YouTube. It's very wholesome, and I really like how um, they mix gourmet with isekai, and I it, it became one of like my um, go-to uh, genres now. So I also have Kakuryu Bed and Breakfast for Spirit, but, but this is more of like a romance drama than teaching you how to cook. Um, this ending is kind of predictable though. But it's it's still good. It's still uh, a great romance anime to watch. This I saw in Billy Billy recommended to me, and I was really disappointed in the way. I also kind of ranted this on the month that I have wrapped up and review all of the anime that I've watched. But the case of Hannah and Alice is it's basically uh, investigating a rumor of this guy. They said that died, but turns out just changed school. So my camera cut me off actually, and I have lost maybe twenty ish minutes of footage however uh, it means that i've been talking here for 20 minutes and then um the camera didn't pick any of that up but if you see like maybe a shift in like the lighting or possibly the framing or whatever it means i have retaken this i think the last that i recall talking about was case of hannah and alice i'm just hoping the camera can pick up like the singing that is outside right now i think they're singing christmas songs but whatever uh the case of hannah and alice um it's basically a story about a rumor that this new girl was trying to investigate uh, because of her class. So she was sitting on the seat of this kid that is rumored to have died and therefore is cursed. And so she's trying to investigate that. And it just turned out that the guy who was sitting there in her seat only transferred. He didn't die. And it, it was really like a pointless game. Um, like a pointless rumor of the stupid kid who did stupid stuff and disappeared suddenly. So that's why. It isn't worth it to watch through, so that's one. The next here is actually one of my favorites for this year. Talentless Nana is like a twist to your usual superhero academy narrative. Like think um, My Hero Academia. However, um, instead of like having these children who have superpowers go to a school in order to train them to become heroes, in this one, in this case, uh, children are being taken to a secluded island wherein they go to school there and are trained to kill off monsters that uh, the society deems as like um, evil. However, one of them is actually an assassin hired by the government to one by one kill off all of her classmates. In this case, it is Nana, and she starts questioning whether or not her work is actually a good thing or not. And I really like this. I'm so looking forward to the next one of this. Classroom of the Elite, of course. Aka 13 Territory Inspection Department is one of my favorites as well. Um, this month, actually, the month of June, has a lot of like titles wherein I really liked. Um, this one was uh, an inspector who goes around and audits each uh, territory's departments, like a government department, auditor, 
And you can see through his travels, where in each of the nations or each of the territories have like very specific cultures and like products that they provide. And it somehow is also a commentary on the good and the bad of like in real life countries. Like it represents like a country or a culture. And I like seeing that, um, especially in like a very political um, standpoint. And it's also a very satisfying anime to watch. Next we have here is two movies that are parallel to each other. So these two are parallel worlds. I found a lot of like TikTok about this to every you I have loved before and to me, the one who loves you. So what I have done for the month of June was actually to roll a 20-sided die um, and pre-prepared a list of 20 titles to see if like which number I roll, I will watch it. And as for this case, um, people in TikTok or like in those that make reels and such say that whichever um, movie you watch first, um, drastically change the way you see the ending and it doesn't matter which one you start first but for me since i rolled uh this one first before this i watched this first and it is a romance sci-fi it is about the belief of parallel worlds and thinking if you could like consciously go to the different parallel worlds and the existence and also your decisions that branches off these uh different parallel worlds and endless possibilities of one decision we all know what parallel worlds are and so for this case as someone who has already finished watching these two, um, I do highly suggest you actually watch this one first. To me, the one who loves you, uh, to me, the one who loved you, because this, um, the second one, to every you I loved before, references a lot of terminologies and scientific stuff from this one. So for me, if you want an introduction of how this world works and how um, the mechanics and also like the motivations of the characters, um, this story... Um, gives you a more backstory on why this here happened. So these two are basically the difference is that um, one storyline, he, um, the main character, lived with his dad. The other, um, the other universe is that he lived with his mom after the divorce and he basically has two different love interests. So um, it's actually a very good movie to watch if you're into sci-fi romance. Also, these two are like recent um, ones that for most of the time when I watch an anime, I don't usually watch those that have come up uh, on the same year, like for 2023 releases, unless I know that I really, really liked it or like it's a series or like a season that I have been waiting for. I don't usually jump in and watch. But in this case, Denmark Deathplay and Malevolent Spirits Monogatari are two of which... I kind of jump into because of the synopsis and I find it very intriguing and interesting. Death Mount Death Play is like the reverse isekai wherein a fantasy character goes to modern Japan and in this case he is a uh, necromancer and we think that necromancers are like evil beings but it turns out he's not and this is his story and how he lives a different life in modern Japan and people are like um People are like looking for him because they say that he's evil and such. And so I recommend this as well for like a refreshing twist on like reverse isekai and supernatural. And then Malevolent Spirits Monogatari is, um, I really like this. This is like an exorcist who I believe, if I could recall correctly, his parents, I think, were the ones that died because of these spirits. And he somehow does not find any respect or mercy towards these spirits, even though exorcism is not just brute force. You can always exorcise spirits um, through peaceful means or like talks and such because not all spirits are malicious. However, he doesn't, um, he doesn't care for that because he thinks all of these spirits are evil and have malicious intentions. That's why he brute forces his exorcism. And so what his like grandfather, was it his grandfather? Um, said that in order to grow and to learn, he has to live with a person who has spirits for servants. And I really like how uh, they learn to grow. And also, and he reminds me so much of Mia Shiro from Fate Stay Night. And I like, I recommend watching this. Another Pokemon movie. <laughs> um, I, I basically don't have anything left to say when it comes to um, Pokemon movies because it's always the same pattern of a legendary Pokemon um, having this connection with the child and then there is like a battle 
a altercation with the evil team of that generation or like a very catastrophic uh, natural calamity and then the legendary happened to help them and then resolution so it's the same pattern all throughout it's a matter of like what um which legendary uh, do you like best and which interaction do you like best with like ash and his um friends and such so yeah, not really much to say more about pokemon movies um, next we have here is High Card, and I will also say this with Spy Classroom, but I think I overhype these two anime in my mind because when I read the synopsis, the concept is so good. And for High Card, think of it as Bungo Stray Dogs, but with cards as their powers. Um, and they are basically collecting these cards because they are owned by nobility and they have been scattered around through the city and they possess very um, dangerous powers. And so this group of people in High Card, the organization, um, is tasked to collect these cards from um, other organizations that are dangerous, like the Mafia and such. It's fine. It's not as high as I thought, but it's still fine. And if there is a next season, I would probably watch it because the ending of this first season is more intriguing compared to the story. Because I think uh, the next season uh, talks more about um, the backstory of the main character. So I'm looking forward to that. Spy Classroom is basically all of the girls were dropouts from their spy universities or spy academies. And they were placed into this team wherein they should go into an impossible mission and to be trained by the best spy ever. However, the best spy ever is a bad teacher. And so it's very chaotic. It's more, to me, it's more of like a action comedy and such. But I really like um, that each of the girls, they don't, uh, excel in their classes because all of their talents are like very much unique to them and it doesn't follow the standard like textbook uh, of their academy but still they're spies and each of them has a specialty i really enjoyed it to your return to season two i finally got around to watching this i held off because i cried in season one and i also cried in season two because this is more of like the sad anime that i want to watch not the sappy romance but rather um drama when it comes to friendship and losing um something important and such this is type of drama that i cry to so if you haven't picked out um to your eternity the series it's on uh youtube and it's it's, it's a good anime to watch hey hero this is basically all my review for it um it's problematic the anime also like um what do you call this it also um calls out on itself as being a problematic having a high school girl living with this um adult man and it's more of like it's not necessarily grooming but still there is like um what do I call this i can't really explain there are um complications to this relationship and there are a lot of things that should have been done that has not been done so yeah magical girl side i really have like a bunch of like magical girl maho shoujo um, anime that I have been watching because I really love Pala Magi Madoka Magica. I grew up with Cardcaptor Sakura, so magical girls are like um, nostalgic and also uh, an interest for me. But I lean more to magical girl horror this time. However, magical girl side should have placed a shoujo eye tag here because it's very much a uh, what do you call this? It's about bullying, it's about like. Um, it's about making girls who have been bullied or have problems become magical girls and help others. But in the same way, they were like preparing for this some sort of doomsday. And the site that um, shows this doomsday countdown is very much a very sexual uh, imagery where, where there are a lot of uh, sperm cells lying around. And so by the end of me watching this anime, I am thinking like, is doomsday some sort of like... Um, a metaphor for losing your virginity or something or losing your innocence because the ending um i'm going to spoil this i'm going to spoil this very much um the ending wherein they decided to not fight anymore uh and just let doomsday happen they don't care anymore because a lot of the people they cared for have already died and sacrificed themselves so they were like uh of course the, uh both of them are girls and they're friends and they're like i don't want to uh deal with this anymore if doomsday will come doomsday will come and then both of them like slept together that's why i said it's like shoujo i and then it, the timer ticked down so like so that means they have lost their innocence and that's the doomsday counter was accurate 
Question mark? So yeah, uh, I'm not sure about that. Oh, so this is the movie that I mentioned earlier, uh, Made in Abyss, Dawn of the Deep Soul. You watch this before you watch season two of Made, of, Made in Abyss. This is also like, um, I also like kind of cried in this. The familial relationships to this is very beautiful, but also like very heart-wrenching because um, the girl that is in here, I don't want to spoil it, but she is so wonderful. And also there's a lot of gore here, so trigger warning for that. Um, as always with Made in Abyss, um, a lot of gore and horror trigger warnings, um, body horror and such. But this, uh, I gave a 10 out of 10 because if only I have watched this first and then season 2, I would have given season 2 a 10 out of 10 as well because I finally know the reference. I also ranted about a certain scientific accelerator in my July wrap-up. Um, anime wrap-up, uh, but this is problematic. I didn't really like it. Um, Fire Force Season 2, I gave it a 10 out of 10 as well because this is when they animated majority of the panels and scenes that I love from the manga and they did it very well, so I gave it a 10 out of 10. I also want to call out Sarazan Mai here. This is one of those like trashy anime that we really love. My friend and I really love this. Uh, the more we talk about it, it's like very cursed but also very um, wonderful and fun. It is To me, it's very much a comedy. But it is a fantasy about Kappas and Ottermen and their feud. And then there's a lot of also like very sexual imagery, but it's kind of a bit funny. So I recommend you watch Harazan Mai if you are like uh, into like little funny crazy stuff uh, about uh, yokai and Kappas. I also watched Bungo Stray Dog Season 4 in July. I didn't give this a 10 simply because... There is one panel in the manga that I was so looking forward to because it was so beautiful, it was so heartwarming and wholesome, but it did not translate properly when it was animated and I was sort of disappointed. And since I have felt disappointment, I didn't think to like give it a perfect 10 because of that. But still, I'm kind of scared to watch season 5, waiting for it to finish actually. I also watched Soul Eater here because um, I wanted to compare whether or not this different from the manga and... All I can say is I really like the ending of the manga better than the uh, anime, but well, to each their own. The anime is still very good. I believe this is when my best friend chooses what anime I watch, and she nailed it with Saints Magical Powers Omnipotent. This is also a cliche, cheesy fantasy romance, but I kind of liked it. Um, it's adorable. It's almost similar to my taste on like the ice guy and his cool female uh, colleague. Uh, slow burn cute romance not all of the romances are like annoying for me because i would like the slow burn ones rather than the full-on romance then drama um yeah farming life in another world is also something that i really enjoyed uh reminds me of like stardew valley meets animal crossing for some reason and then restaurants another world another 10 out of 10 in my book i really love this anime i highly recommend it uh, if you want like a little taste of the different fantasy uh, stories and worlds, um, meet with like uh, food, um, wonderful uh, imagery of food, then Restaurants Another World is something that you might like. There is a season two. I'm looking forward to watching that as well. And then I did have a live action here. I don't know why I put a yellow sticker here because this is for animated movie, but maybe in my brain I was thinking of movies. So that's why I put it there. But I did put an extra red or pink here. Um, this used to indicate my live action. So this is a live action of Zom 100 Bucket List of the Dead. I watched this um, with my brother, actually. And as always, um, whenever it comes to live action, especially like action superhero, I don't really like it as a live action. So I give it a 6 out of 10. I don't know if in the anime version, if it will be better because I haven't finished watching it because I want it to like finish airing before I binge. So it's another miss for me when it comes to live action. Fire Hunter, I am so frustrated with Fire Hunter because it ended out, it ended the season with like a cliffhanger. First, it info dumped me with a bunch of stuff of this world and your understanding of this, but it kind of reminds me almost of like Fire Force because they have like their monsters that are like the same as the Infernals and such, but they kill off those monsters in order for their, their blood or something to be harvested and turn into fuel for them. I really like the story. However, I think it's like a mismanagement of like the scenes. If only it was like... Um, was it really just six episodes? 
I think this is why is it six episodes? Is it not? Did I put it my rating there for some reason? Um, I'll double check that later. But I think it is twelve episodes, um, or I think it's ten episodes supposedly. I made I may have made a mistake here. Is it ten or eleven? Um, exception, uh, space sci-fi um, anime wherein they sent clones of themselves or like the they sent clones of scientists to go to look for another planet for people to live in and like start up their ecosystem and the clones can 3D print themselves um, over and over again and then there was this question of whether clones are, have souls as well and if they are human or not and they also the it, it was quite predictable all of the scenes here were predictable and the animation style is not my favorite and i am also like surprised when i saw this that it was also released last year on my birthday and i'm like why <laughs> but yeah it's it's not it's not for me the very recent anime challenge that i did for the month of september actually is a vlog wherein if i get a 10 out of 10 in uh, an anime uh the video stops or the video ends and I will link it up above if you want to see the whole experience of that. But I really love Ascendance of a Bookworm, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Season 3, Diamond is Unbreakable is also real good. This was a disappointment. This was my favorite. I really love Shadow's House Season 2. Um, this was fine. Hozuki's Cool Headedness is a, a good mythology comedy. Um, slow, uh, it's like um, low impact, very fun sort of. Uh, if you think that hell is like a business, then this is a good, like, this is a fun anime to watch. Kagisama Love is War Ultra Romantic is like the best thing to end on this uh, whole journal, notebook, anime review journal. Because I also have a sticker of Kaguya and uh, Shirogane in the front. And I really love this. This is like one of my favorites. Um, yeah, it's romance. Uh, I am not one for romance, but it's very smartly done and I really enjoy it. Um, not much of like a drama there and that is the end i do have like doodles here uh a vanguard um what do you call this um a vanguard card there print out and i also did like an index for all of this this is all in like uh in order of when i put it in the entry here all of the reds and the green ones you see are the movies so you can see it at a glance and as for this one i will double check first if um uh, Far Hunter is indeed 10 or 11 episodes. So Far Hunter is indeed 10 episodes. I'm just going to add 4 here. And with my tally here at the end, I'm also going to add 4. Just for neatness sake. So this is my final tally for uh, this whole notebook. Uh, I have watched 33 movies. I did a plus 2 there because I forgot uh, Flavors of Youth is counted as 3 movies. Even though I just watch it in uh, I just watch it all in one sitting. So 33 movies, one live action. And as for the series, I did watch 1,723 episodes. I was actually debating whether or not I will add here watch time because uh, imagine seeing how many hours it took to watch all of these. But um, well, let's not do that. So yeah, that is it for my video for today and for this uh, anime review journal number four. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And seeing all of the contents of this one journal, this has been with me for a whole year. And I am looking forward to filling out another notebook and sharing it with you guys. So that is it. Thank you so much again, and I will see you in the next one. So until then, guys, take care and bye.